Good morning, readers. Today is Friday, March 12th, and you're listening to First Chapter Fridays, presented by the Baker Free Library. My name is Juliana, and I'm the library's youth services librarian. Welcome to this week's program. To skip this introduction, please jump ahead to the next segment. Every Friday, I'll be sharing the first chapter of a middle grade book with you. Middle grade books are designed for readers aged 8 to 12, but they can be enjoyed by readers of every age. We hope that this program will introduce you to authors and titles you've never read or considered before. If you like today's chapter, you can place a reserve on the featured book through the library's catalog or by calling the library at 224-7113. If you'd like something to do while you listen, head to the library's website, bowbakerfreelibrary.org. On the 4Kids page, listed under Events and Programs, you'll find a link to an active listening worksheet that you can download and print. While you're listening today, jot down any thoughts, questions, or ideas you have about the story. You can also draw, doodle, pick up your room, build with Legos, or work on a craft project while you listen. All right, readers, let's jump into today's story. Before we turn the clocks ahead this weekend, we'd like to share a book about one of our favorite night-roaming nocturnal animals, the possum. Today's featured book is called Apple Blossom the Possum by Holly Goldberg Sloan. Besides their nighttime wandering and their famously long tails, possums are also one of the most dramatic creatures in the animal kingdom. Possums, Mama says, are the true performers of the animal kingdom and all the world's a stage. Young Apple Blossom, the smallest one in her family, needs to find the role that she was born to play. She may be tiny, but she's not timid, and when she accidentally falls down a chimney, she discovers that she's also daring and quite clever. She'll need to be. Inside the house are some of the monsters her mama has warned her about, the ones called dogs and people. The curious Apple Blossom, her faithful possum brothers, who launch a hilarious rescue mission, and even the lonely girl in the people's house are all about to discover new, amazing things about life, love, and how to act. Want to hear more of this story? Let's begin reading Apple Blossom the Possum by Holly Goldberg Sloan. The babies of a first-time possum mother must have names that begin with the letter A. This explains to half-sisters and half-brothers, cousins and aunts, uncles, grandparents, and other relatives how they each fit into their own possum family. Second batch babies, according to possum tradition, use the letter B. Not many possum mothers reach G, but there's a clan on the edge of the city dump that claims enough litters for the babies to have Z names. There are rumors that they skipped ahead, and there's no way of knowing for sure, but it's a fact that there is a group of possums at the dump named Zeke and Zack and Zelda and Zoe and Zeta and Zalman and Zara and Zeus and Ziggy, which makes them very, very special. The A babies recently born under a rotten log in the middle of a cold night live in their mother's pouch on a lifeline of liquid food. Their eyes open, their fur grows, and so do their bodies. Two months later, they are strong enough to be out in the world. Mama Possum is a free thinker, and she encourages her babies to find their own names. So far, there is an Antonio and an Elisa, plus Abdul and Ajax and Alberta and Angie and Alan and Alphonse and Atticus and Alejandro and Augusta. And there's even an Amlet. He wanted to be named Hamlet, but he wasn't an H-baby. But the last one to enter the pouch, the littlest possum that almost didn't make it to safety, still has no name. She is 77 days old and must learn possum life, which means she is taking acting lessons. The other possums watch as she wiggles around on a patch of dirt. She's rehearsing being a snake. Mama Possum, who is a natural theater director, instructs her. Your tail looks believable, but you need to feel more like a snake in your body. Move from the inside. The littlest possum raises her hand. Her question isn't about technique. While squirming, she has gotten distracted. That happens to her a lot. I want everyone to know that there's something hatching above us on the tree, she says. Antonio calls out, 
Those are apple blossoms, and they don't hatch. They're flowers. Antonio has answers. He's just a natural-born thinker. Her brother Ajax starts to laugh, but not in a good way. She thinks a flower is alive. She's an apple blossom. Alberta giggles. No, she's not. Mama Possum claps her hands together, and that signals that it's time to take a break, or at the very least that Ajax should watch his mouthy attitude. But the littlest possum doesn't mind. She knows what Ajax said was meant as an insult, but she likes the way the word sounds. Apple blossom. She raises her voice so that they can all hear. Today I take the name Apple Blossom. No one answers, so she adds, Don't try calling me Allison. Ajax butters, We won't. And from that moment on, she is Apple Blossom the Possum. It isn't long before the break is over, and it's time to return to theater class. Apple Blossom is happy that it's another possum's turn. Her eyes focus on her sister, Angie. She doesn't have to be a snake. She's more advanced, and she's doing a scene with Amlet. All of the possums are quiet. This is a very dramatic scene, and Angie is a very dramatic possum. She puts her hand to her forehead and moans, No, no, the drink. Oh, my dear Amlet, the drink, the drink, I am poisoned. Angie falls to the ground. Her breathing slows to next to nothing. Then her neck stiffens, her arms and legs extend straight out, and her tongue rolls from her mouth. Apple Blossom is horrified, but Mama Possum claps and the rest of the group cheer. There's nothing these possum babies like more than to celebrate a worthy performance, and this is an excellent death scene. Apple Blossom's voice quivers with concern. Are you sure Angie's okay? She really doesn't look good. Maybe we should check on her. The smallest possum turns away. She has tears in her eyes. Mama tries to comfort her as she explains that acting is a vital part of being a possum. But none of them has any idea why. They are nomads. Or as Mama Possum explains, ours is a roadshow. At the end of every few nights, we find a new sleeping spot. Some are better than others, but don't even think about hanging your hat and calling any place home. Apple Blossom wonders what that means, because they don't wear hats, although she would like to. Now that they are out of the pouch, they travel on their mother's back whenever they relocate, all 13 of them, and this always happens when the sun goes down. Mama Possum has rules, but one is more important than all the others put together. This one rule cannot be broken, ever. It's called bedtime. Nothing matters more than following her exact instructions when Mama Possum says that it's time to borrow under a log, squeeze into a drain pipe, or slide under a seldom used barbecue. When the sun starts to change the color of the dark sky to something close to a ripe plum, they know that they need to disappear. Bodies safely hidden, then eyes wide shut. All the nocturnal animals do the same thing. They vanish from view. The raccoons return to the hills. The bats find hollows in trees and rocks. The skunks slip away like magicians. The beetles and the moths simply stop moving. Mama Possum's knowledge has been passed down from possum to possum. Now it's her turn to be a teacher. Darkness fully falls, and her babies, awake again, huddle in a circle. Her brood is three months old when she reveals her most important information. We are awake only at night, because when the sun is out, monsters rule the world. Hamlet was the last one to stop sucking his thumb, and now he can't help himself. He puts his whole hand in his mouth, but not before saying, Monsters? Mama Possum tries to make her voice sound comforting, even though what she says isn't. Yes. Now there are three kinds of monsters, and all three kinds are terrifying. They are present at night, but they really own the day. Apple Blossom's brothers and sisters move closer to one another as Mama Possum continues. The first kind of monster is made of metal. They have wheels and bright eyes when they are out after dark. These eyes are blinding. Antonio interrupts. We've heard the metal monsters before. They're loud. Mama Possum nods. Yes, Antonio. The metal monsters roar and honk, and they move very, very fast. They can flatten an animal in an instant if one gets in the way. Apple Blossom can't even think about something so frightening. She tries to close her ears, but it isn't like closing her eyes. She can still hear her mother's voice. The metal monsters are called cars and trucks. The ones that live around here only go on certain paths. Some of these paths, ones far from here, 
are so wide and so filled with cars and trucks that at night they look like ribbons of white and red light. Only a fool would ever go near those huge metal monster paths. Only a fool or someone with no other option. Apple Blossom promises herself to always stay away from the wide monster paths. Antonio makes a comment. But the cars sleep, and then they are harmless as rocks. You've taken us near a car when its chest was cold and its eyes were dark. Mama Possum rubs her hands together. Yes, this is part of what you must learn. When is a car awake, and when is it asleep? Apple Blossom raises her hand. So what we need to know is what wakes them up? It takes Mama Possum a long time to answer. Her nose twitches, and then she finally says, The second kind of monster has formed an alliance with the cars and trucks, so our understanding of both enemies is important. The monsters work together. The second monster wakes up the first. Hamlet follows with, What's the second kind of monster? Apple Blossom asks, What's an alliance? Mama Possum steadies herself. Now is as good a time as ever to spill the beans. Alan looks around. What beans? Amlet gives him a small kick. It's a saying, Alan. It means she's telling us the whole story. Alan looks disappointed. Oh, I like beans, especially the dark ones that have spicy sauce. Suddenly, Apple Blossom is very, very frightened. Mama Possum wraps her long tail around Apple Blossom and pulls her close. The second category of scary creatures walks on two feet. They smell like dead flowers, salt, and grease. Everything scares them. They are always angry, and they don't have tails. Not having tails seems very sad to the babies. Angie shakes her head. She is dramatic, and acknowledged now as being the best performer of the group. She strikes her signature pose, which is a hand to her forehead, as she wails, An animal without a tail is so sad. At her side, Elisa adds, Maybe that's why they're angry. Whispers of so sad and angry buzz throughout the group. Mama Possum waits until they've quieted down and then continues. The second monsters are called people. The people cover themselves in layers of cloth because they have very little fur. They scream when they see a night creature. They are noisy and unpredictable. They are dangerous and not very smart, believe me. All of the Possum babies stare at their mother. It's clear they do believe her. Now, the people don't like to share. That is their biggest problem. So they set traps, and they use weapons and poison. They are sneaky and mean. But the good part is that most of the time, they don't climb trees at night, or go into hedges, or dig holes. Sighs of relief come from the babies, and they are big sighs. And that's where we'll stop for today, readers. If you'd like to hear more of this story, and learn more about the different kinds of monsters in the possum world, call the library or visit bowbakerfreelibrary.org to reserve Apple Blossom the Possum by Holly Goldberg Sloan. If you like this story, you might also enjoy these other children's books featuring nocturnal animals. Pax by Sarah Pennypacker tells the story of a tame fox trying to make it in the wilderness for the first time. You might also like Hoot by Carl Hyacin about a new kid in town and his attempt to save a colony of endangered owls. Lastly, check out Our Friend Hedgehog, The Story of Us by Lauren Castillo, a story that features a hedgehog, a beaver, an owl, a mole, and a chicken. Thank you for listening to this episode of First Chapter Fridays. Tune in again next week for another great story.